this next section is a must-know tips before any ERP implementation. And, and this is actually an excerpt or a summary of a larger 90-minute uh, to two-hour presentation that we do for CIOs typically for our clients. We'll, we'll go into go into our clients and we'll do these executive boot camps. We'll go in and kind of do a deep dive of what are 20 best practices for ERP implementations, what are things that you need to be prepared for, and what should you know before you embark on any type of ERP implementation. So I'm just going to go through the 20 uh, at a high level. Um, but some of the things to keep in mind, and I'll, I'll kind of cherry pick a couple of these and, and talk, but the, the rest of them I'll, I'll let you read. But the first thing I'll point out is the first point, which is ERP is about business, not technology. Um, so many times we, we see companies get so wrapped up in, you know, what, what, what software am I implementing? How do I find the best software VAR, you know, the company that knows the software the best and really, you know, has the hands-on certifications and knowledge? That stuff is fairly important, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, it's not nearly at the top of the list of what, what is going to drive the success of your project. In fact, if when we look at the, uh, the data behind successful projects versus failures uh, in our research and in our implementation experience, uh, this, the lowest, one of the lowest correlations is, between, is, is with how well the software vendor or your technical resources know the software. I mean, that's almost like a, a base uh, ante you have to ante up just to be in the game, but that just gets you in the game. It doesn't ensure any kind of success. It, it just it gives you one less chance of failure uh, is, is probably the best way to think about it. So if you can find some good technical resources, that's great. That's going to keep you in the game, but that's a pretty small uh, percentage of what, as far as the impact on your success rate or the correlation with success, it's a pretty uh, small uh, factor. Now the bigger issues are going to be, or the more important aspects are going to be around your project management your business process uh, management, your business blueprinting, uh, the organizational change management, the training, all, all of that stuff, the, the people in the organizational and the process issues are going to be the, the things that drive whether you succeed or fail uh, in the project. It's, it's, I honestly don't recall the last time I saw a failure because the, because the consultancy or the system integrator or the VAR didn't know the software. That, that's pretty easy to get. Now, there's better resources than others out there, but you, you can find resources for whatever whatever type of software you're implementing. Uh, what's more important is all the other stuff that happens in the project. Um, the other thing is selecting the right software is the first step in a successful ERP implementation. So this third point, um, that's something we, we like to talk about because it's, you know, if you try to force fit a software into a situation that isn't going to work or into an organization that uh, has misaligned business requirements with the software capabilities, uh, chances are you're going to fail uh, in that implementation. And, and when we look at our expert witness history and all the projects we've advised on uh, that have gotten to that lawsuit stage where they've hired us to come analyze, so many times it, it's clear that they chose the wrong software or they didn't go through a, a diligent software evaluation and selection process, or they relied on a biased vendor or system integrator or big five firm you know, that, that's aligned with SAP or Oracle. And they'll typically go in and recommend SAP or Oracle, maybe Microsoft if they've got a, a good partnership set up with them. So you, it, the decision ends up being driven by things that shouldn't be driving the decision. And so selecting the right software is going to be the first step in making sure that you have a successful implementation. Uh, second or third thing I'll focus on on this slide and then I'll move on is that, that, that no ERP software is perfect. No matter which software you choose, you're going to have strengths, weaknesses, and trade-offs, even though you know, a sales rep may tell you their software is the best and there are no weaknesses, it can do whatever you want it to do. Um, chances are that's not true, and most of the time, uh, even when we, when we make recommendations uh, to our clients, we always point out where the weaknesses are because they need to know that uh, because it's going to drive your, your implementation time, it's going to drive your costs, and it's also going to be important when you get to your business process mapping and your business process management and blueprinting, you're going to have to define uh, how your processes are going to work within the limitations of the software, um, assuming you don't want to do any heavy customization. Uh, but key point I'll cover on, on, on here as well is the sixth one out of the 20, which is the business process reengineering should happen before, not after you implement your ERP software. Uh, so many companies and, and uh, software vendors and, and system integrators will say, hey, don't even, don't worry about reengineering, just buy the software will re-engineer as we're implementing the software. There's two the phases or two layers of re-engineering I mean, in, in business process management. If you look at it uh, kind of at a, at a high level, there's the business process management and re-engineering that, that happens regardless of what ERP software you, you use. And then there's the lower transactional levels of detail that are 
driven by the, the software you do use. So it, there is some truth in that the reengineering can happen at that level, you know, three, four, and five of business process management, business process reengineering. But in terms of level one, two, and maybe even getting into level three of business process reengineering, um, that's that's the level where you can can and should reengineer uh, before you go to implement the software, and arguably even before you select the software, because that's going to allow you to define the processes the way you want them to look, and then find the software that best fits those processes. Uh, a lot of companies, and, and especially at the executive level, and I apologize to the to the executives on the line because I know there there are a lot of CIOs and CFOs on today's webinar. But one thing about executives, a lot of times they want to kind of delegate the reengineering to the software vendor, and they, they like the idea that a software package is going to help them reengineer, and it's going to drive the reengineering for them. They're going to leverage best practices and pre-configurations that the software provides. There is some truth to that at the transactional level, but the reality is that at the transactional level, that's not going to tell you how you run your business overall. You've got to do that independent of the software. So when we do an implementation and even uh, oftentimes during the selection process for our clients we will re-engineer their processes along the way um, and what we found to be the most successful situation is where we do the level one two and even getting into level three re-engineering when we do that before the software is selected that's that's the ideal situation because then you select you have a better software selection the implementation goes faster because you've got software that's aligned with your re-engineered processes and you can start rolling out the uh, SOP and the, the process changes, the SOPs and the, the process changes um, even before and during the implementation and it makes it easier from an organizational change management perspective when you can kind of spoon feed those changes to the organization. Um, and that relates to the seventh point here and then I'll move on to the next slide which is that uh, ERP software best practices and pre-configuration solutions do not solve uh, all or even most of the challenges of ERP. It's great marketing messaging. I think uh, the larger ERP vendors, especially like SAP and Oracle, have done a brilliant job using their um, their tool sets and their, their messaging behind uh, accelerators around pre-configuration, industry best practices, because it's what the average executive, that's what they want to hear. They want to hear that it's going to be easy, that uh, the software will do all the heavy lifting for them in terms of re-engineering their processes. The reality is that that may be true in some cases, like on your back office operations, like your accounting or your finance. There are There is some truth to it on those base operations, but when it comes to your core competencies, like the way you sell or the way you manufacture your product or the way you distribute your product or service, that's those areas of core competency are areas where you're a lot less likely to get any kind of real lift from those pre-configurations. Um, and you're going to have to define for yourself what you want that to look like so you can configure the software you want it to, to the way you want it to work. And if that, and if it really was the case that uh, every company out there was just using uh, industry best practices, then every company would look the same, and there'd be no real competitive advantage for anyone out there because they're all using pre-configured best practices. So, um, obviously, if you just consider that, the the reality is is that that's not the case because there there are companies that are outperforming others, and it really has nothing to do with uh, pre-configurations or best practices embedded within the ERP software. And then uh, another point I'll make here is that uh, if, you're, if your operations in the ERP system are misaligned, it's probably not the fault of the software. So a lot of times we work with software selection clients that uh, maybe they failed in their implementation, they've, they, you know, they've only achieved part of the business benefits they expect, and, and they blame the software and think that something's wrong with the software. Most of the time we go into those situations, I'd say probably at least 70 or 75% of the time, it's not because of the software. In fact, the software can do most of what they want it to do. They just haven't adopted the software the way it should be. They haven't defined their processes well. They haven't they haven't defined their business process maps and their, their blueprints. They haven't handled things well from an organizational change management perspective. And then uh, finally, you know, the the last thing we'll say is that uh, this twentieth point that ERP success and benefits realization is largely determined before the implementation starts. And this is important because you know it's kind of like. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of football, the NFL football. And, and, you know, they talk about, a lot of times you hear coaches talk, and they, they talk about how so much of the victory when they win is, is from before the game. It's all the preparation. It's the, you know, getting the, uh, you know, getting the playbook in place and uh, having the right plays called and, and certainly adjusting during the game and responding to what the, the competition does. But they, a lot of times you'll hear coaches say that so much of the victory happens before the game is ever played. And the same is true for uh, ERP implementations. And when we do, when we look at failures, when we're called in for ERP lawsuits, most of the time we're in those cases 
we could we can point to something that happened early, early in the implementation or even in the selection in a lot of cases that contributed to the failure was kind of a first domino to fall to trigger a bunch of other problems that ultimately resulted in the failure. So that's why it's so important to kind of really you know keep your head on straight and keep a clear view of what it is you're trying to get done. Make sure you've got the right expertise, the right outside support starting early on in the project because that's um, ultimately uh, those decisions that are going to either make or break your project are oftentimes made you know in the first say three or six months of your your ERP initiative. 